following interview was, <clears throat> was conducted with Professor Thomas E. Uh, uh, Thomas Hall, Professor Emeritus of Supervision for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, February 25th, 2009, at his residence in West Lafayette. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your, where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. Oh, my. I, I was born in, uh, in Whiting, Indiana, uh, up in Doe Region. Uh, I went to high school there. Uh, what was high school like? Any activities, clubs? Uh, I liked, uh, I was in the, I, I liked music, I still do, and I was in the orchestra, high school orchestra, and a high school band. Did you play a, into a what instrument did you play? Well, well it wasn't an instrument, it was oh. always percussion, which you had, to, you had to know how to count if you were in the percussion section. So. Okay, okay. But you know, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, was the high school a large size, or? No, there was a, uh, 500 total in the, in the four grades, mm -hmm. but it was the only one in Whiting. Whiting was surrounded by Hammond and East Chicago, all that up in the region. And so it, uh, the only way Whiting could grow was up, and it never did. But, uh, did you have any, uh, any siblings, brothers or sisters? No. no I oh, didn't. you're an only child. Yep. Okay. Which then, never bothered me. Okay, I, or did well. After high school, then where, what was next? Tell us about college. Well, I, I put a stint in the in the army, and then af oh, after high school you went to the service. Yeah. Oh, okay. And after that, I, I went to Purdue on the GI Bill. Okay. How'd you happen to select Purdue? Well, I guess because it was in Indiana, and I, I always saw my life, of course, being from Indiana. I knew Purdue, and all we heard was Purdue and IU, which never appealed to me, and and uh, I, I almost. It was sort of funny. Before I went to the Army, I was, sort of was interested in the Colorado School of Mines, of all things. And luckily, I just came to Purdue, and and uh, I've never, never been sorry. I, I Sure. What year did you enter? At, at Purdue. At Purdue, uh-huh. Uh, 47. Okay. Tell us a little bit about campus and what sort of activities you were involved in when you were here. Were you married at the time? or? Uh, no, not okay. at the time. I, and uh, I met my wife at Purdue, mm -hmm. now a wife. Uh, no, I, I really, it was, it was when all well, the, you know, GIs were back. We, it was kind of a serious thing. A big really. influx of students after the war. Oh, my, yeah, it's thick. And uh, it was kind of odd because, you know, you'd see pieces of uniforms all over the place and mm -hmm. somebody had on a pea jacket and this sure. summer, I don't know. Whereabouts did you live when you were a student? Well, I, I, with my buddy and I, who, from Whiting, he got out of the Navy about the same time, and we got an apartment someplace out in Lafayette that nobody believed now, you know, naked bulb, attic kind of thing, a couple of cots. Uh, housing was really tight because of all the inflows. Right. And, and the campus uh, was not prepared for it, nor no, the right. and the community wasn't either. That's correct. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, both he and I wound up in the different fraternities. But then the, the, the people were a little older, and, and they were more interested in a place to live and eat that's close to the, without all of the harassment and foolishness, of what then was foolishness. Sure. And uh, they were all, well, most all of them were older and, and just, you know, wouldn't put up with certain things. And so it was really sort of a place to live. Right. But it was close to campus, and... Uh, it worked out. AKL, yeah. Alpha Kappa Lambda. Okay. And it was just you know, an interesting What sort of thing. activities? Have, do they have dances and things at the Union? Were there some activities like oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they the union, the union used to have, in fact, they had big bands there off and on. And uh, I remember uh, I remember my wife, now my wife, and I went to hear and see Tommy Dorsey one time. And, uh, I mean, uh, I've heard they had really the big name Oh, they bands. had a big time. There in the, in the north, which is surprising too, in that yeah. in that for that era, the north and south ballroom. You know? Sure, sure. But that was a fun time. And, uh, well, the the first, oddly enough, the first when I came here as a freshman, after you'd been in the service. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The first time I ate anything in West Lafayette was at the Triple X, the Trikai, which is still there and still booming. You know, that's right. That's kind right. of interesting. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was there, I guess, back in the 20s, somebody said. Yeah, it is. I think 29 or something like wow. that it started. That's pretty good. Yeah. 
has lasted this but long. But it was... It's uh, the, and it is the oldest drive-in in the state of Indiana. Yeah, I think, yeah, I've read that someplace. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the whole experience. What, uh, what was your program that you took and any professors that, uh, and did you join any student organizations while you were here or clubs or not necessarily? No. Uh, You're pretty busy with studies. Yeah, and uh, I, I was in industrial education. Well, my bachelor's degree was a B.S. in trade and industrial education which became industrial education, which became what is now industrial technology. Okay. So, where, were, where were your classes? What building were they in? Were because, of course, your Canoli oh, Hall didn't exist. Well, the education building, which is no longer there. And uh, oh, I had, I had a, a math class in Purdue Hall, which is no longer there. And uh, that was near the education building. It was, yeah, you know, right next door. Because mm-hmm. I've seen pictures. And I think the new math, the new, but the math building, I think, was where the Purdue Hall was. And in, in old, original, not the one that burned down, but the original with the tower, Haviland Hall, I had classes in there, some industrial engineering classes, some shop classes. Yeah, kind of a neat place. It was old, rickety. But and the train went through the campus. You, oh, you bet. Absolutely. He'd stop and wait, wait till the train went by with coal cars going down the power plant. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. absolutely. That's really nostalgia when you mention that for people today because it just, I, the train was going through when I came still yeah. in 1968. Well, I read someplace that some alum bought a little section of railroad track. You can still see, there, is well, it? you you can put they put those tracks and it's between Stanley Calder and Weatherall. And when you're walking in that open area, uh-huh. you'll see them. They had a dedicated service about a year ago on yeah. that. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Oh, yeah. You know, for well. and it kind of to bring back nostalgia and one of the things that people remember about the train that went yeah. through the campus. Well, the biggest tallest thing was a was a was a smokestack. Smoke right. And, 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 uh, you could always tell Purdue from a distance because of the smokestack. Right. Uh, now house. it's the bell tower. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, um, did you go to any of the athletics? Did you go to football or basketball when you were here? Uh, Games? Were there any athletic activities? Really, not not, not much. I, mm-hmm. uh, except even today, uh, I've never been much of a of a sports fan, except for the now the Chicago Bears because of where I grew up. Sure. And I watch pro football, and uh, and we we are my wife and I are, are addicted to the women's basketball. Season tickets every year. Yellow till I'm hoarse. Good, uh, that's nice. And they've really the attendance has increased over time too. Yeah, it which has. is nice. And they've done well as well. So that's it works right. both ways. And uh, fortunately, we we went out to uh, uh, not Santa Clara, uh, San Diego. No, all the computer. Where they where they went to the, f- the final four, they oh, they won the, in in, uh, in California. Yeah, where Purdue won the whole thing. Right. And, uh, we were really glad we went there. I mean, that, that was, was a it. lot of fun. That's and, right. Yeah. And uh, well, anyway, that's, after uh, then, when you got your degree, what came next? Well, I went uh, I, I went with General Motors and uh, was at uh, <laughs> Guide Lamp Division, which no longer exists. The General Motors in Indiana? You were in, it was in Anderson, Anderson yeah. Yeah, Anderson, and, right. Uh, it, uh, I was a die-cast supervisor. And then sometime after that, I, I transferred to General Motors Institute, which no longer exists. It was in Flint, Michigan, and I was in the plant management training department where we'd go around in the United States to GM plants and conduct supervisory training programs. And then that Next step was at Purdue, and uh, I can ramble on if Go you ahead. want. No, to. and then then you came back to Purdue. Yeah, uh-huh. well, I was coming to Purdue summers to work on my MS. Pardon me, in industrial ed. Uh, and <clears throat> finally, I got to the point where I was enjoying working here summers more than I was working. Did you get your summers off in order to come here? I took a leave of absence. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so, so then it, it came about that in 1955 that uh, I was offered a job to stay at Purdue, and this was really kind of interesting, that I was hired basically by two individuals, George Davis, who was in conferences, division of conferences, and uh, 
as I recall, was a head of adult education. Great guy, just a wonderful fella. And Harry Bellman, who was the uh, department head of industrial education, with well, these two guys wanted somebody to work out of conferences but hold rank in an academic department to start supervisory training programs in local, meaning Lafayette, business and industry. So I thought, yeah, it's pretty neat what I've been doing. This was, had not been done before? Is this no, no, okay. this was... And, the uh, start of that yeah. type of thing. So <clears throat> I... I I was in industrial education as, a, as an instructor. Uh, we were in, again, the old education building. Mm -hmm. But this was all, all these sessions were run through the division of conferences. And uh, they were all self-supporting from fees that, uh, that were established. Did they pay, pay to take these classes? Oh, yeah. Oh, they yeah. Well, pay. They, they paid they paid. Purdue, I assume, sure, the business right. office. So, sure, right, exactly. Via the conferences. Like it is today. Oh, just like that. In fact, I, to my knowledge, I hadn't changed that much. No, I don't think so. And, uh, Were they held in Stewart Center? Was the conference? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Because it would have been the final, last renovation before they did the Hissy Library was about 58, so when they finished all of that. Uh, but to interrupt and digress, we were talking about buildings mm -hmm. that are no longer there. I sat in Fowler Hall when it was the white building by the... Uh, I've seen pictures. By the PMU. And, uh, sure. It's a really nice, pretty building, set back, trees, grass, which right. is now the Stewart Center. Right. So, right. But anyway, anyway that's, <laughs> you know, you deal with some of these old fossils, you know. No, and, I like to hear about some of the old buildings. And having looked at a lot of them, we have a lot of photographs, and now we put a lot of them up on our website. It's, and people look at them when they're doing their history and things of that yeah. sort. They're really nice. Yeah. Go ahead. So you, they hired you. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I, I did that, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and met a lot of nice people out in the state, and and the thing the thing grew and uh, it went way beyond Lafayette, and pretty much became companies, business, and industry in Indiana, and then began to get onto the borders sure. beyond that, and it was really getting more than one person me could handle. So at, at that time, uh, this, was, this was in uh, 57, this is when I dropped out and became a full-time instructor, tenure track in industrial education, and we started the supervision programs, which is we were talking earlier that Greg Barnes was heavily involved in. He was here at that time. He was here, no, well, we got him to be in supervision programs. He was hired to, to be in supervision programs. And then he developed a staff to go along with us. And they expanded greatly into many places in the United States. Sure. And, okay. But this, this is fundamentally what happened. I received my MS finally during this same year, 57, and I started once again taking leaves of absence, going over to the University of Illinois uh, summers to work on a doctorate. And uh, I had to go over there, of course, the last year because of prelims and sure. dissertation. In residence. Yeah, oh, yeah, you bet your life. And uh, Were you married at that time? Do you have family? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yes, yes. We got married, we got married in, in, in... You met your wife here? She uh, in, at Purdue. She was, mm -hmm. <coughs> pardon me. She was a Sigma Kappa at Purdue, and and uh, we got married in '51. And uh, uh, good woman has hung in there for some strange reason ever since. Uh, good. Do you have any children? Pardon me. Do you have children? Yeah, we have two daughters, and uh, uh, one is in. Uh, she graduated from the vet school at Purdue and is in a vet hospital in Bloomington, Indiana. And just loves what she's doing, of course. And uh, the other daughter is uh, graduated from Purdue in uh, art and design, which I'm not sure is here anymore. It used to be an HSSE, Humanities, Social Science, and Education. And uh, she is, is now a, a office manager in Florida of a firm that is uh, a commercial uh, interior design work. Uh, no homes, just banks, sure. things like that. Commercial. Commercial, right. yeah. And uh, she's very happy. Two, two kids, two grandchildren. Uh, the, the, <clears throat> the vet is single. And uh, my other daughter in Florida has uh, a son that is now a sophomore in uh, University of Florida and another one who's in uh, 
uh, Edison Community College down there. Oh, good. And, uh, it's a nice place to go when it's cold. <laughs> yeah, you bet. In fact, they, they won't, they won't, well, I should they won't come up here, but they really don't like to come up here. And, uh, well, let's not get into all of the... <laughs> The weather and whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. So to, yeah. Well, after then you finally got, did you, were you not able to get your degree here at Purdue? Was it a suggested to get it elsewhere, the PhD? Uh, no, I, it oh. wasn't, it wasn't suggested. It, I was told you cannot get to three degrees, at that time, you cannot get three degrees from the, from Purdue University. Okay. That uh, some combination has to be someplace sure. else. Okay. And so, uh. Well, that was close, not too bad, except there was some hundred miles. Trip. Sure. And, uh. Great school, great university. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, no, no problems along those lines at all. And this uh, kind of bring, brings us up to the School of Technology. Right. Uh, in 1964, when I received my doctorate finally, uh, after much so 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 sweat and everything else that everybody else goes through, uh, the School of Technology in 1964 became official by the Board of Trustees action, uh, July 1st. And of course, the School of Technology, which I keep saying became, as we all know, the College of Technology, but I'll keep on with the good old School of Technology. And the School of Technology would not exist were it not for Chuck Lawshey. Uh This guy was a dynamic, marvelous individual, uh, Purdue, I don't know how Purdue ever got along before he chucked Lashi, that uh, he was a real doer, he was a mover. Uh, the School of Technology was his idea, his, his child, and he raised this child. He was, he was the, first, uh, the first dean, and uh, very shortly after the School of Technology actually became legitimate, so to speak, uh, he became a vice president, and he hired uh, George McNally, to be his, his. Uh, Let me interrupt you for him. What had uh, Laoshi been doing? Uh, how did he get involved with getting the school established? I th is I think that that he was very much involved in in the regional campus movement, yeah. and uh, all sorts of expansion. He was an expansionist, mm -hmm. and uh, what can we do that we're not doing now? Kind of thing. To how, can we, how, to can we grow? how can we grow? Absolutely. And uh, he was just an idea man. And uh, the, the kind of... He, <clears throat> he, he Dean Lashi, appointed, selected, chose all of the original department heads for the School of Technology, of which I was one. And this is kind of an interesting story. My wife and I and our two kids at the time had a little house on Carlisle Road. And one evening we were sitting in the front yard in a couple of beach chairs and my wife was reading the journal and courier. And all of a sudden she said, uh, wow, you're a department head in the new school of technology. And I said, I am? And she said, yeah, it's right here. And I read it and I was. Uh, I had, no one had said anything, I'd, and uh, this was I I I I love Chuck Lushy. Well, I, this was he the kind of guy he was. No with... one said anything to me. I was just I was fine. It's I, like I won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> yeah, was, was, uh, you know, but that was kind of interesting, sure. kind, kind of fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, what I became was the first head of of industrial supervision. Oh, that was the original name. The initial, initial, uh, original name. Then that became supervision, the Department of Supervision, and that became what is now Organizational Leadership and Supervision (OLS). Okay. So this was the, <clears throat> pardon me, the pro progression. Uh, then in 1982, uh, I, I, as they say in academia, stepped down. And How long were you then? You from sixty four to eight, uh, it, 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 yeah, from from sixty yeah sixty four to Boy, eighty. You ought to share some of the changes, and you you built your faculty and the students. Yeah, and, yeah. But how many did you increase the departments? What were the the original departments? Do you recall uh, in the school of oh, technology? Oh, oh. I hope oh. I hope I don't miss any in the original. 
Uh, and I'll try to remember the heads if I can. Somebody told me that I am now the only living one of the original heads. I'm not sure of that, but that's what somebody told me. Uh, there was uh, uh, this nursing, the Department of Nursing. Helen Johnson was was the head of that. And uh, in, in department head meetings are, uh, conducted by Dean Melton McNally, we used to pour kidding onto that poor woman who was just a great gal. We just loved Helen Johnson. I've met Helen a couple times. And a marvelous person. And we just poured it on her. But anyway. And Dorsey Moss was uh, the head of uh, building construction. Uh, Gil Rainey was the head of electrical technology. Jim Maris was the head of aviation technology. And I... Oh, Max Eddy was the head of industrial education. And I may be missing one or two. That's okay. That's, that's a good shot. And you can always add it in to the transcript afterwards. That's no um, problem. That's okay. And, and uh, you'd been, prior to that, most of them would have been over in the education department before? I, uh, in industri- when, industrial industrial ed. Well, now when the college started, where, what was the facility? Was Kanoi Hall? Had not oh, no, no. Kanoi Hall wasn't. The, where oh, were that, you oh, that's another thing mm-hmm. back in nostalgia. Golden Labs, Golden Shops were where... Michael Golden. Michael Golden Shops. And I had classes in there 7 o'clock in the morning on the top floor engineering drawing, you know. It was a big... There were the students coming and going all the time. We almost wept when they tore that down. I mean, it was... Yeah. Well, anyway, that's... Uh, you're talking to the old folks, you know. So, uh, but it was all a lot of fun. And then in 1990, I retired. How did uh, Kanoi Hall come uh, come about? Uh, I'm not sure the connection was, of. Were you in that? Were you still uh, in at the school uh, when the building was built? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. I, that I was had in an the office. 80s, I had an office. In yes, because uh, Reagan came here in '86. That's and, oh my yes. And he so that building so. It's maybe eighty or maybe. Before. I'm not sure when the building was really right. a, I can dedicated. Look it up. But, uh, Tell us about President. Were you here? What did you get to see the president when he came, Reagan? Oh no, no. We were told that uh, given oh boy, it was really strict. We were given an absolute time limit, and when we must all, except people that were involved in taking him through and showing him things, everybody else had to be out of that building way in advance and go home. I mean, just go home and sit. And uh, we could come back when he'd left and all this. And it was pretty tightly timed. And I remember they put uh, paper over our windows. So and all the windows in... In, in, in the classroom, the in windows? Kanoi Hall, the, the whole building. Anywhere where, where, the, where the president would be or walk by. Uh, all the doors had to be locked. They had dogs that went around f- into each office. Uh, we had to open every drawer, not pull it all out, but just open it. it couldn't be couldn't be locked, and, uh, and leave it open. Well, just just pulled out so it, so that as we were told, so the dogs could sniff and so the whatever they are uh, could look in and make sure that there is no bombs and revolvers and <laughs> what have you. But the security was just absolutely fantastic and. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was that was, that was when he was here, and he visited the lab over there too. Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly what his route was because I, they were pretty secretive about this. And in fact, as I understood it, there was a possibility that even though they said he'd go in this elevator, that he wouldn't. He'd go in that. I mean, it was really very tight security, mm-hmm. and there were very few faculty in the building. Just the ones that were going to show him here's where they do this, right. and. Uh, uh, I guess he was mightily impressed. I went to the, they had that uh, over in Mackey Arena. He spoke over there yeah, and that afternoon, and so I went over there. It stood in line till we could get in, and and uh, they had his car underneath, and then, of course, the Air Force One was at the airport, so what I did is after the program was over, I went home and watched him take off on oh, TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting, though. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the department, some of the changes that you made. And uh, maybe curriculum or the students, how they were open. And graduate education, did that take off too while you were graduate there? Educa- graduate education. Graduate no, uh, from, education. From the very beginning, uh, well, in fact, at the very beginning, uh, industrial education 
was the only department that had a BS degree. All of the others had associate degrees. Then it wasn't too long after that until all the associate degree departments became departments that granted a bachelor's degree. Uh, the on, however, I think to this day, but I've been out of there a while, that the only place to go to graduate school in the school is through industrial education. I don't think any of the others offer any okay. advanced program at all. Okay. And you had to get, you made changes in your curriculum. I mean, that must have, must have been a challenge. As oh, a, yeah. As oh, a, yeah. We had, well, yeah. We had a lot of changes in the curriculum. We hired a lot of faculty. Uh, it, uh, it was an interesting time, kind of hectic, but interesting. Yeah. What about industry support and uh, alumni? Did you start developing an alumni base, too? Uh, well, uh, when I was there, it was, it was pretty much informal. And about the time that I was not there, uh, they really went all out to get, as I remember, every school, in, every department in technology was supposed to get a, a pretty broad base of industrial business people, which they've done. I've like an advisory committee. Advi that's it. That's the key. It was advisory committee. Sure. Right. And ours was sort of by telephone and somebody we knew and what do you think of this? It was a lot smaller then. Oh, yeah. Sure. But what was the contact with the regional campuses? Were they offering a similar program at that uh, during uh, the time you were there? Not, not originally, but uh, again, it, it grew. Uh, we, I one time went around to the regional campuses and uh, kind of, I suppose, helped them get started on this thing. But as I understand it, and, uh, that it's now a pretty big thing in, in the regional campuses that uh, uh, OLS is. Supervision is, to, is a big thing. Could you address how did you happen to change the name? Uh, the name changes. They just thought. Well, all I can say is, is for the first one, I wasn't there when OLS became OLS, but <clears throat> we started as industrial supervision, and it wasn't too long. I don't remember the date at all. That uh, all of us and the powers that be, uh, dean and so on, felt that industrial was too limiting. That uh, uh, we had. Uh, Thank goodness, some young ladies that came into our department, and they, some of them, couldn't exactly see themselves in a steel mill or an oil refinery. So we dropped the industrial and uh, tried through coursework and contacts and uh, uh, the very beginnings of an internship and co-op to get other businesses other than heavy manufacturing Involved, which we seem to be able to do, and they seem to like our people. Sure. And, uh, I was going to talk about mention about diversity, so that in, that changed over time. Oh yeah, in gender yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And now, and what was the? Do you recall what the placement, the career placement, was pretty good for the students? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It, uh, yes, uh, we had uh, several companies, I can't name them offhand, that would come to the. Uh, placement service uh, mm -hmm. uh, under uh, Dick, Dick Stewart. Dick Stewart. And then they would usually, some of them, not all, some of them would come right over to, to our department, to my office, that they really wanted to zero in on our, right. our people. They, they all felt, and, and this is what we tried to do from the very beginning, and I think they still do, is to try to have practical graduates that can do something and want to do hands something, hands-on kind of thing. And... Uh, in fact, there was, uh, just as, as an example, there was uh, one of the aircraft companies in Los Angeles, or, I'm sorry, in California, Long Beach, Long Beach, that uh, told me one time that they really, I, I asked him, I said, why is it that you come all the way from California to the Midwest to, to get people? And he said, I'll tell you why. He said, the, the Midwesterners, and particularly Purdue, he said, these people are ones that really want to work. He said, Midwesterners have a work ethic. They've come from families that worked. Uh, they're used to working. And he, and he said, in effect, all we can get in California are people with orange hair and earrings who, who only work so they can get to the beach on the weekend. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of interesting. It sure was, yeah. And, uh, and uh, they, they did. They just sap people out. In fact, we had one young man that was out there for, I don't know, a year or two, and he came back. And I asked him, I said, you know, what, what's the matter with you? You're out there with the sunshine and all this. And he said, 
I didn't fit in at all. He said, <laughs> "It was not for me." He said, you know, he said, "He said I want to be back here in the Midwest," <laughs> and, and it is a different culture, totally. Sure, and, sure. Uh, but uh, your enrollment increased, and, uh, and the faculty. And any um, university committees that you served on while you were here in the Senate? Oh or gosh, uh, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I just yeah. yes, but quite a few. In the yes, quite a few. Yeah. Right, and, uh, and that uh, that takes, you know. The campuses that were the reason would have been Michigan would have been North Central and Calumet and the IUPUI. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. And, and, uh, and the statewide technology program existed at that time, did it not? Uh, this again was as I th- as I remembered. This Correct. was Chuck Lawshey's doing. Okay. Uh, okay. He was the guy behind that. And that's that. grown a lot too. Over oh the time. boy, yeah. It's and just they get, well, they, they have programs. They have big campuses now. That's right. Yeah. And gee, when I went up to North Central, they were in one little building that I think they rented that was somebody's home. Well, well someone told me in the early days that the uh, Purdue campus in Indiana was on 38th Street. It was in a building or something like that. Yeah. Of course, it's expanded with the IUPUI. That's but, right. Uh, in general area. Well, I guess. I always think these are these are not the good old days. They're just the old <laughs> days. You know? What well, it was before, right? Yeah. How about um, any awards or honors or that you'd like to share with us that you received over time? No, I don't. What about your retirement thing? They give you anything special at your retirement? No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't want anything done. I, in fact, I, I, I said if they have it, uh, jokingly, I said if anybody has a party, I won't be there. And everybody agreed to this, thought this, but then much to my surprise, and it was sort of a surprise, uh, one of our faculty people, Jerry McCarthy, had me over to his house and come to find out the department was there. And we did, you know, it was just nice. nice, drinks, dinner, this yeah, kind of thing. That's nice. Surprises are always and, and some surprise gifts, sure. most of which were ha-ha, you know, <laughs> but, uh, and a lot of kidding. Yeah. But that that was the only retirement that I actually had right. as far as sure. anything official or right. formal. Now, you served under President Hovde and... Oh, he, boy, yes. And uh, He I, was there for... When he, you, he was a, a neat guy. I didn't know him personally. But I, I the things that really impressed me with, with, with Fred Hovde was that when all these GIs, ex-GIs, when ch- classes changed, it was, the sidewalks were solid with these guys. And again, you know, pieces of uniform, you know, and uh, once in a while, he would come out with his felt hat on, and and, and he he just his overcoat. He, he he'd just get in maybe two or three guys, and he just you know how are you doing and any 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 problems? You know, I mean, he was really relating to these. He he loved these guys. We have some pictures in the archives where he's walking along the sidewalk and the students are with him. You yeah. know, that's why when you talk about the hat, I've seen similar pictures. And he was, he was, he really liked these, and the guys liked him. Mm-hmm. And, and he, the thing, I love to go to commencements and that's see him guy. up there with his, with, with his uh, Oxford uh, red hat. Others have shared the same thing. And There's his, just something about it. And his resonant voice. And this guy was just to me. He was a college president's college president. He was wonderful yeah, he... in all respects, and uh, very. Li- I mean, I met the guy just by chance. A just cordial, regular fella, you know. Yeah, very, very nice. I yeah. couldn't say enough about uh, about Fred Hobby, uh, and he was the only one I really well, then... knew. I didn't know him, but. Dr. Hansen then came after him, and then yeah. and Dr. Baring was still pre- yeah, was president. Yeah, Dr. Maybe. Hansen came in. Now, Dr. Hansen did one thing that I thought was pretty nice that he sure didn't have to do. His wife was very nice, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of our seniors was having a big beer glass in, blast in his apartment down on the river road, and he casually mentioned that he invited the president and his wife and I said something like, what in the world is the matter with you or something like that? I couldn't imagine this. And my wife and I dropped by. You were invited? Oh, sure, I was invited. And while we were there, the president and his wife walked in. And, of course, right away they go out in the balcony and give them both a mug of beer, you know. And he, was he again, was just related to them talked to them was one of the guys you know and he he wasn't there long my wife and I weren't there long but it was obviously going to roll a while so we made our appearance as they did and they left but I thought they didn't have to do that 
that's nice. And, and he uh, was he used to be in the union a lot too. He'd have breakfast in the union. Oh, I used yeah. to see him in Good, there. Yeah. So he he got it. And as a matter of fact, he was a he and his wife were fact fellows at Target, and a friend of mine who was a fact fellow at that time. They used to go over there quite often, and they used to eat a lot of this drop in the fraternities and sororities, yeah. you know, sort of thing. Too. Yeah. But uh, they made they were honoraries, but they yeah. dined over there a lot. Were you a fact fellow at any time in the fact fellow no, program? No. Mm. And Hovde the one that started that program. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. and it's it's still going. The change I think now is with the uh, campus dining more centralized, not specifically in the residence halls. It's a little more difficult because it's harder to get. You know, get together yeah, at a convenient right. time. Whereas if it's in the same building, then you can come down from the floor. Yeah. So, but we've I've been with Tarkington for quite a long time, and they have still some special events. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I I I will I won't have a black and gold coffin. But by gosh, I'm I'm you, you better be careful what you say around me about <laughs> Purdue. Uh. <laughs> we like Purdue, right? How about retirement activities? What have you been doing in retirement? Uh, I, traveling or we we did until okay. uh, my wife has some health problems uh-huh. and until that struck and I'm not far behind that uh, we did a lot of traveling and any uh, special spots or did you go to Europe? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. In, in fact, in fact, I, I did some consulting in, in in Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, England, and Iran, and. Uh, and that was sort of another story, but uh, we uh, we was loved this the around when the the Shah was there? Were they, oh, yeah, in that yeah. time? Okay, so it was oh, yeah. before. Not when the Ayatollah was there, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, the Shah was. Was this there. also in Northern Ireland before the the, uh, the troubles, as they were? No, to? the troubles were going on, and, and in fact, it was. Uh, we went up to uh, Jim Wendell and I went up to DeLorean Auto company that made the DeLorean car that it went defunct with the doors that opened up like wings. We went up to their factory and uh, I've never seen Their factory was in Northern Ireland, wasn't it? Was their factory in Northern Ireland? In Belfast, yeah. Okay. And uh, going in from from Dublin to to Belfast on an airplane, I mean, I never saw such security. Soldiers around with guns, you know, and and you there was no carry. You put your carry ons after they looked at it in a sack. You were no carry ons at all, and they look at it to make sure. That, and then they put it on the plane. You and you picked it up when you got off. And I mean, it was in security. I've never seen anything like that. But the troubles were on, believe sure. me. But uh, that's interesting. But yeah. uh, when we went to the the Republic of Ireland, that. Uh, that was just a nice place, but I'm told that uh, we we both just loved it. But we're told that now, it's old Thomas Wolf. You can't go home again. That uh, because since they've gone into the European common market, that the place is booming. They've got more money. They've got a lot of infrastructure. And when we were there, it was the old Ireland, you know. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, with the cards and, and, and the, and, uh, we, the don't, we don't we don't we don't want to go back. <laughs> and, uh, oh. Oh, that's all. You did some traveling. Now let's talk. Do you have a Purdue tradition that uh, you'd like to share with us and an outstanding event, either one of those or both? What was this? Uh, a Purdue tradition and maybe a special event in your life that you think about? Oh, wow. Um, well, you yeah. might mention I think women's one, back. Well, these are sort of silly, I guess. No, this is fine. One thing I thought of just now uh-huh. was that uh, way back there in a the 50-something Purdue football team beat Notre Dame when nobody was supposed to ever beat them and broken their streak of something or other. And President Hobby, when that happened Saturday afternoon, the campus went wild. And in our fraternity, I don't think there was more than two cars, one of which was always on blocks. And so everybody was riding around that chain and whooping and roaring and uh, you won't believe this at Purdue but you can see a beer can or two and uh, there was a a special convocation that night the president called and Fred Hovde stood up in the Hall of Music and he said uh, now tomorrow or Monday tomorrow uh, Monday he said as president I am telling you that this university is officially open 
And then he looked kind of funny and all around, kind of grinned. He said, but, and, you know, if there's not much we can do. <laughs> and obviously turned everybody and cheers and yelling and screaming. And he gained a lot of points. And, and, and so Monday was a day off. And uh, that's just kind of guy he was. That's right. Oh. <laughs> Any any special event that you think that was kind of neat? Well, you, yeah, you, was, you were going to women's basketball, so that's you kind of carried that along. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, we we're hanging there with them. We've sure. we've gone through, I guess, about every coach they've had, and so I, Lynn Dunn was the first one that we. And then there, Carol was uh, somebody was there before her. Yeah, but yeah. just for when, when the program was in, it was just getting started. Yeah, I think we started buying season tickets when Lynn Dunn, <coughs> Lynn Dunn was there. All right. Okay. Any uh, closing comments or anything, little notes that you've made that you'd like to uh, make anything special? No, I don't believe so. I've just sort of rattled on no, just kind of aimlessly. Um, I, I must apologize. When I talk about it, now my throat gets awfully dry. And, uh, you're, fine. you're fine. Anything special that you'd like to? How about OLS has, has grown a lot, has it not? The, uh, as you look at it, 20, oh, oh, 21st oh century. Oh, oh, boy. It's, it's mushroomed. It's mushroomed. More so than more than you thought it would, you think? Well, I wasn't really shocked, but I was glad to see it. I mean, it, right. because it seemed to me that, that OLS has and always has had a good program for, for, for practical men and women that really, and there's nothing, God bless engineers, heavens, we need them. I mean, my dad was one. But I think we need a lot of hands-on people that are, are just not overly computer-oriented. Right. Uh, they don't mind getting their hands dirty. They love to do things. And uh, right. and I think that, 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 again, the School of Technology, I think, really fit in. And, and it was right. needed, badly needed. Right. And... Uh, but they had a lot in the, la the labs there. They, that facility allowed more labs than you probably oh, yeah. had before oh, yeah. for the school. And many of those departments need a lab. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, of course, its computers have taken over, too. That's right. Right, yeah. And, uh, well, no, I'm afraid I've sort well, of run that out sounds of gas. Good. No, I think that's very good. Thank you very much. Oh, this thank you. Here. Thank Enjoyed you. Enjoyed it. Uh,